morning and welcome back to Career Coffee Shop. I am Isnoda Alvarez, Admission Specialist, and along with me is Jane Schindler, Coordinator of Career and Job Placement. Thank you for joining us today. James, how are you doing this morning? Is I am doing great. We have an exciting show today, but then again, don't we always? Our show today opens with the Perry Center, here to tell you about our emerging technology programs, followed by the Partnership for Strong Families, here to educate us about the many resources in our community to support families. Right after, we'll jump into a career corner. So get your resume ready to submit and go after one of these great jobs. And while you're at it, go ahead and like this video and share with a friend or colleague. And please don't forget, you can put any questions into the chat. Yes, to hear more from our guests, James, with Halloween being around the corner, I couldn't help but think about scary childhood stories I was told growing up. One of those stories told is La Llorona, which to my understanding, there is a movie out there about it, and I just refuse to watch it. But as I got older, what scared me even more than La Llorona was not knowing where I was spending my money. Before I got serious about budgeting, I used to always buy coffee on my way to the office, and it was when I started putting my budget together that I realized I spent a lot of money buying coffee. I realized that I could save money if I made coffee at home or at the office. Because of this goal, I embarked on a journey of discovering the art of making coffee at home. You know, Is this morning I shared with you that I'm drinking reheated coffee in the microwave. So you know what? I'm all about saving that money. So let's hear it. Yeah, so today I wanted to share a few tips about making coffee at home. Um, I thought about making a presentation, but then I was like, you know what, let me not go overboard. Okay, so uh, so once again, I have a few tips. The first one is to determine what kind of coffee you like. So a couple of shows back, if you have been watching, we talked about um, the difference between light roast coffee and dark roast coffee. You know, everyone's a little bit different. And at the beginning of the show, some of our guests were talking about how we like to make our coffee, which was super exciting. So determine what kind of coffee you like. The second thing is to ask yourself, do you like pre-ground coffee or do you want to buy coffee beans and then ground it at home? Which is super interesting because maybe it's just me, but it feels like right now the popular thing is to grind your own coffee. The third thing is to determine what kind of brand do you want to purchase. So there are some popular brands out there in the stores that you can buy, such as Starbucks and Dunkin Donuts. So instead of having to go through a drive through you can just go to Publix and buy it. Or do you want to support your local business in the area? Um, so that's the third thing. And then the fourth thing is to select what kind of machine you want. Do you want to stick with a regular um, coffee maker or do you want to go a little bit fancy, buy a French press, or if you want to maybe do a pour over coffee maker, those exist um, and feel free to look online. And then the last thing I think is important, but for a lot of people it might not be important, is to choose your favorite coffee creamer. Now, James, personally, I mentioned before on the show that I like soy coffee creamer, especially the vanilla flavor, and it has been amazing. Um, it has enough sugar in it. I don't have to add extra sugar. But as I mentioned earlier, making coffee can be a form of art. You make it how you want um, to enjoy it, right? You're exactly right, Liz. Making coffee for some is exactly that. It's a form of art, and everyone has their own style. I know some mornings I wake up and I just have to get that French press out just to change things up a little bit. So there is no right or wrong way of making coffee, even though some people may argue otherwise. And just like all the different opinions on coffee, careers are exactly the same. There's no right or wrong career and there's definitely no one size fits all. A career is based on what you enjoy doing or maybe it's what you find you have an aptitude for. It's a very individualized choice. With that, our first guest knows this all too well. Please welcome Sari Sanborn joining us from Santa Fe's Perry Center, who will be telling us all about emerging technologies. The floor is yours. Thank you, James. And thank you for having me here on Career Coffee Chat for Santa Fe College. I am the academic specialist for emerging technologies at the Perry Center for Santa Fe. Our facility is located outside of the high-tech corridor area across from Progress Park on 441. We have a small building that was established in 2009 with some high-tech labs, and we do have several classrooms. 
Our really open, uh, we offer six emerging technology programs. The first one is very attainable. It's only nine weeks long and it will get you out of minimum wage. It pays between 13 and $15 an hour as a phlebotomist. Phlebotomists are people that do blood draw through venipuncture for specimen collection. And you know, all you need is a GED or a high school diploma to qualify for this program. Our next our program is biotechnology laboratory technician. Essentially, you're a lab tech in a lab, and it could be a forensics lab, it can be a research lab for genetics, or even working with a group of scientists that are trying to find a vaccine for COVID-19. The program is only a year and a half long, and it does offer you an associate of science degree with an internship at the end. Lab technicians make between 34 and 40,000 starting pay here in this area of Florida. Our second pro, our third program is another associate of science degree in chemistry, which is a chemistry technician. So they're a technician that has a strong chemistry background. And that is a year and a half. And it does offer you between 38 and 45,000 starting pay. I have a third associate science degree, which deals with electronics, and that's called biomedical equipment technician. The biomeds are vital when it comes to repairing and maintaining medical equipment. So for example, the, hot, the heart monitor, the respirator, somebody has to maintain them and keep them calibrated. Um, as some of my biomeds tell me, once you take apart one respirator, they're all pretty much the same. <laughs> That's a lucrative deal. There's a high demand in the country for biomeds, and they start out between 38 and 40,000 in this area of Florida. It's a year and a half long program with an internship at the end. Now we lead into the bachelor's degrees for emerging technologies, and that is clinical laboratory science. The clinical laboratory science technician, they are people who are in the labs that are isolating specimens. They're training to become med techs in hospitals. They are the heroes behind the scenes that are collecting specimens isolating the specimen to determine what is making a human or an animal sick. They also have to pass a certification before they are in the workforce like nurses, and it's called ASCP certification. So those, that group of people, they are saving lives, diagnosing, and one of those is COVID-19. They typically start between 45 and 50,000 for a starting pay. That is a four year long bachelor's degree for high school graduate right, of high, right out of high school. We do accept transfer students into the clinical lab science program. Those transfer students can bring in completed coursework like immunology, biochemistry, um, hematology, so yes, we do accept transfer students into the clinical lab science bachelor's degree as well. And that you have between two to two and a half years, depending on how much coursework you have left to take to complete the program. Our second bachelor's degree is industrial biotechnology. What is industrial biotechnology? Very important. You are a technician, a scientist, research scientist that could be working on pollution control, conservation. You could be in product development, pharmaceuticals. You essentially have that foundation to do research in a lab with a group of scientists. The industrial biotech graduate will start out working between 42 and 45,000 starting pay. So those are my programs in a nutshell, and I'm open to any questions if anybody has any. Hopefully we do have a couple of questions for you. Um, that first one would be, how do students find out more about your programs and getting started? I would love to see anyone. I am open for Zoom appointments. I'm also here at the Perry Center. 
uh, for walk-ins. Um, walk-ins will be seen in the conference room or a large classroom for COVID safety reasons. You can also get in touch with me through my email address or my phone number that's listed in the survey directory or the information pages on the Perry Center website. Awesome. We also have those listed down below in the in the presentation today. I've got another question for you. You said you're located out on 441 out by Progress Park. Do most of the students' classes occur out in that facility or are they in various different locations? So all the program specific courses, the biotech classes, the clinical laboratory science um, classes are here at the Perry Center in Alachua. We do have undergrad chemistry courses, biology courses, anatomy courses here at the Perry Center. I do try to schedule students schedules to closest to where they are located for their apartments, their homes. So in other words, I'm organizing schedules based on um, their, where they're located and what best suits them. Awesome. And then we have one last question for you. Um, if someone is interested in the medical field, is this something that they can look into? So the bachelor's degrees are great segues into pre-med programs or other types of science programs. Our graduates do move forward for masters, um, for example, masters of biology and cell science at the University of Florida. Pharmacy, we have students that are in the pharmacy program at UF. They have an edge on getting into those programs based on the current science knowledge that they have. In other words, with clinical laboratory science, they already know the medical language because they are uh, diagnosing and determining how to best treat the problem. In other words, if they have um, MRSA, for example, they diagnose it and determine what antibiotics work best, if any. So they have that medical language already when they're applying to med school, which gives them an edge. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much again for sharing all this information. Um, and as Suri said, you can definitely contact her. Her email address is located below in the description. Thank you. Welcome. So a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to intern at a local nonprofit in their marketing department, where I was able to see some of the behind the scenes of Partnerships for Strong Families. Partnerships for Strong Families is the lead child welfare agency in 13 counties in the North Central Florida and provided services to families, including children who have experienced abuse and neglect. They also work in the community to prevent child abuse and neglect from happening in the first place. With us today is the expert here to tell us more about Partnerships for Strong Families. Um, please welcome Partnerships for Strong Families. Hi, everyone. This is Melinda. Um, I am with Partnership for Strong Families, and I am their behavioral health coordinator. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you all. Um, so as she said, Partnership for Strong Families is the lead agency in child welfare for the 13 counties in North Central Florida. Um, we work with families that have already been deemed needing services and then also work on the prevention side as well. Uh, we are su a significant part of prevention efforts in our family resource centers. We have three locations in Gainesville and one in Chiefland, and we also have one opening in Lake City early of next year. Um, we are currently accepting interns at these centers for anyone looking to gain experience serving and working with families. We also accept volunteers for programming at the resource centers. We currently have an open position under the clinical team at Partnership for Strong Families, and we're looking for a clinical staffing coordinator. Uh, the qualifications for this position include a master's degree, a minimum of two years post degree experience in the field of mental health or substance abuse. Um, we're also looking for an individual with good facilitation skills, the ability to make clinical determinations, excellent organization skills, and the desire to work in the field of child welfare. The clinical staffing coordinator has a unique role of bringing together a multiple disciplinary team to make team um, treatment decisions 
track progress and coordinate plans for discharging to a lower level of care. Additionally, the clinical staff and coordinator can utilize their clinical skills to process and compile the children's medical uh, mental health history as part of referring and scheduling suitability assessments. Although this is not a direct service position, the clinical staff and coordinator plays a clinical role in helping stabilize children in the child welfare system who struggle with complex trauma and significant mental health and behavioral needs. For anyone interested in having a positive impact on the local child this holiday season, we are seeking out donors for Wish Upon a Star. Uh, it's a toy drive for children in care. The children in our care request three holiday wishes and donors will sponsor these wishes for any number of children. Gifts can be purchased in person and dropped off at our Gainesville office or purchased online via the Amazon wish list. Um, we also are accepting monetary donations and can be sent to pfsf.org slash donate. If you are interested in sponsoring a child wish, then you can contact Jacob in our community relations department and I can send you guys his email. Jacob is also the point person if anyone is interested in interning. And if anyone is interested in the clinical uh, position that's available, then you can access that on our Partnership for Strong Families website. Awesome. Thank you, Melinda. We've got a couple questions for you. Yeah. First question is really, it's a two part. So how can the community best support Partnership for Strong Families? And second part, do you have any volunteer opportunities? If so, what's the best way to get connected? Yeah. So there's a few different ways that you can support partnership. Um, you can support them either through the resource center, they're always accepting donations as well. Um, so if you have anything that you think children could use or families, then you can contact any of the resource centers and make donations through them. Um, if you're looking for volunteer hours or wanting to volunteer, then most of those will also be through the resource centers and you can link up with those by contacting Jacob. Awesome. And then we have another question for you, Melinda. What do you feel are the most important qualities you look for in an applicant? Um, I think it depends on what position you are looking for. If it's the clinical staffing position, um, then somebody that has the drive and the desire to really be assisting families and children um, and understanding that it's from not a direct care line, um, you're gonna be assisting from a broader perspective. If you're looking at one of the intern positions and somebody that just has a heart for this, um, it's definitely a calling to be working with these families and, and being an assistance to them. So just having the heart and the desire. Thank you so much, Melinda. This is a, a very lot. important and difficult topic to discuss. And the work you and your colleagues are doing is amazing. So again, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. All right. As I always say, on to my favorite part of the show, Career Corner. Our first employer joining us is from OP Software, here to tell us a little bit about the company and what positions they currently need to fill. Please welcome Alejandro or Alex and Kyle. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Um, James is, thanks for having us on the show. We appreciate uh, the time to be able to share a couple things about OP uh, with the audience. Uh, first of all, I make my coffee at home. Um, and I'm from South America, so therefore I have coffee with my sugar is the way that we do it there. Um, at OP Software though, you get to have it for free. So that's something to kind of keep in mind when you work at OP, right? Um, so OP Software, where are we located? I serve as their, um, as their Chief Business Development Officer and the CFO for the company. So I lead our human resources uh, group um, and deal with everything that has to do with uh, recruiting. Um, Kyle will come on here in a second. Um, he's a part of our people ops team. Um, OP Software is located just up the road from, uh, from Santa Fe main campus, right on the corner of 83rd and 39th. Uh, easily recognizable by the guy that you see in my background because he is on the side of our building. He's like our little mascot. Um, OP Software has actually been around for, believe it or not, the last 25 years. Uh, the founder for OP Software also actually is a, a CPO, a certified prosthetist and orthopedist that owns the clinic uh, below the software company. Um, OP Software is focused on developing uh, EMR, so medical software, uh, for a very specific vertical, which is orthotics and prosthetics. Uh, there, it's not a gigantic uh, vertical in the U.S. Um, or other parts of the world, 
Um, and we basically create the software that helps them run, you know, their entire, their entire clinic, except the back office, right? You get QuickBooks or something like that for that, but we run patient entry all the way to parts ordering, all the way to delivery um, is part of what the OP software uh, does for our customers. Um, we are in the process. Again, we've been around for 25 years. The, the software has grown. Uh, we've got a fairly good customer base and we probably have 50 to 60% of the practices in the US. Um, the, um, the software itself right now is going through a whole rewrite so that we can move it to the cloud, right? We're trying to create our SaaS platform. So we're very, very focused on that. Um, uh, so, it, so it's exciting times, uh, times for us. Uh, generally speaking, especially at the entry or, or you know, a little bit after entry level roles that we are looking for, typically we're looking for folks that you know, are excited about work, uh, want to learn a lot, right? They sort of see work as, as not, you know, not necessarily something that I have to drag myself to every day, but more of a, you know, it's an extension of my education, right? I come to work because I learn a, a different thing where I don't have to take tests, uh, though I'm tested every day, I guess is what I should say. Um, so we're looking for that person that's like super curious, wants to learn, is, is highly driven and has lots of, uh, lots of energy. Um, so that's kind of our, our, my intro for what OP Software does uh, here in Gainesville. Uh, we are headquartered here in Gainesville. Um, we, do have, uh, we do have folks on the team that are in various parts of Florida, um, in Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, and all the way to, uh, to Washington State. We don't have a lot, a lot of remote folks, but we do have a few, but we are generally headquartered um, here in Gainesville. So with that in mind, I'm gonna pass the baton and I'm gonna let Kyle sort of talk to you a little bit about the roles that, that we have open um, and where you would go to sort of keep up with, you know, openings and things that are changing within, uh, within the, uh, the open roles. Sure, Th thanks Alex, um, happy to be here. And so the two roles that we have open right now are the associate BI developer. So you'd be working with Power BI, SQL, and you know, creating dashboards for our customers so that they can see the, you know, all the data a lot better visually. Um, and then we also have a software support agent role open. So that's on our customer service team. And that would be just helping out our customers with the software, um, you know, troubleshooting any issues that may pop up um, and guiding them through that. So um, those are the two roles open right now. But of course, you know, we've we've had, you know, many roles open up here and there throughout the, the years. So um, if you definitely be on the lookout for those openings on our uh, website at opsoftware.com. Um, we have, you know, various internships open up. Uh, I know we just, you know, we just filled the IT internship open, or sorry, we just filled the IT internship. Um, and we generally have like software engineering internships. Um, sometimes we have business development internships on the business side of the house. So um, we have, you know, roles for pretty much uh, a, a, a lot of um, specialties uh, in the, uh, you know, software industry. So, um, and we also offer some of the benefits that we have as the non-accrual PTO. Uh, we have uh, OP flex time, health benefits, and 401k. So. Um, those, those are some of the things that you can expect uh, working at OP. So, awesome, Kyle. Thank you. And and what I'll uh, what I'll close up our, our little session with is I'm going to explain to you because a lot of people you know like to ask, hey, what does OP stand for, right? Some people will say OPI, right? So it's not OPI, it's OP. Um, and OP stands for Orthotics and Prosthetics Information Expert is uh, is what it stands for. So uh, that's our skit. Um, any, any questions? Yes, actually we have a question that came in and it is, do you have internships available for Santa Fe College students? Um, we sure do. So we, we, we have you know, a typical intern pool that we'll do in the, in the spring, in the fall, in the summer. Um, so again, our website is the best place to keep an eye out for you know, specific internships. We tried to do, you know, three on the, what I'll call the, the technical side of the house. And we sometimes try to do one on the business side of the house. So business side of the house being, you know, finance, accounting, sales, marketing, you know, those kind of roles, right? Those are all the roles that roll, uh, roll under me. And then my chief operations officer, Priya, 
Um, she then takes care of the technical aspects, right? So that's our engineering, uh, product development, uh, quality assurance, um, and then also our uh, support desk, right? So we try to make sure that we open, you know, about three for one side and one for the other um, that, you know, are typically on our website if we open them. Kyle, Alex, I've got another question for you. Uh, and I know we talked a little bit about it, but having visited your facility and seeing those amazing 3D printers, I'm curious, is there much cross utilization between the two businesses? And then we had sort of an add on late add on, are the internships paid? Uh, James, really good question. So first I'll deal with, I'll go in reverse order, right? So generally speaking, our internships most of the time are paid. We do have some that are, you know, potentially unpaid. Most of the time we try to pay them. Um, in some cases, we have students that are maybe looking for credits, right? So in lieu of payment, we may do credits, right? And most of that happens in our, in our business intelligence team is where I mean, those typically, uh, typically happen. Um, so we have a little bit of both. Uh, typically, the posting will be very specific as to whether it's a paid or unpaid internship. Um, and then the, the crossover from, uh, um, from you know, the clinic to the software company. Uh, we do have some really cool 3D printers. Um, they don't let me play with them. Um, I haven't tried playing with them yet. Uh, most of the time, the folks from the software company don't really mingle with the 3D printers. The place where, where we do sort of have a very symbiotic relationship is the fact that most of the time we have regular software releases. So it's important to understand what a software company does. Like we don't make widgets, right? We make software. So we have very similar to the manufacturing process, right? Somebody has a spec, I got to build the spec. Somebody codes the spec, right? With some kind of, you know, programming language. And then we release it to our customers. Um, so what we become really good at doing is we typically release um, all of our new stuff to the clinic first. So they can be our test site, almost like our alpha site. Um, they get to test the software and then they either can just walk up the stairs and beat us up because it doesn't work or they can walk up the stairs and say, hey guys, this is awesome stuff. Um, so we'll get a little bit of both. Um, and one thing that we are going to, uh, to um, sort of test run uh, here soon for the first time is, you know, as we develop some of our teams, is potentially getting, you know, a person to actually work in the clinic for call it a month or two before they move into another role. Like let's say we have a customer facing role. Um, it's very difficult to go and recruit people that work at orthotics and prosthetics clinics into a software company, right? Because they're on the healthcare side of, of, the, of the coin. Um, and I'm on the software side of the coin, but for those roles that are customer facing, it's always important to, you know, how do you live the life of, of your customer? Um, so we're starting to play with the idea of ideally just like, you know, dropping somebody into the clinic and saying, go live the life of the customer for two months, right? Because in two months, you'll have a really good understanding of the struggles that your customer has. And therefore, when you talk to them, you kind of know where, where they're coming from. Um, so we're going to start playing with that a little bit more to really, you know, as, as, a, as a training tool, right, as an onboarding tool, we're going to start doing a, a lot more of that. Guys, this sounds absolutely amazing. One more time, give us the website where people can go to apply. Kyle? Sure, that's opsoftware.com. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Alex and Kyle for being with us today. We will continue to search and send great people your way. So thank you once again. Thank you both. Next up, we have a returning guest. Please welcome Rose from Liberty Tax. Rose, the floor is yours. You muted. Technical difficulties. I'm not very tech savvy, so none of those tech jobs are for me. <laughs> so, uh, okay, my name is Rosemary. I currently own a Liberty Tax on Tower Road in the Home Depot Shopping Center. You can reach me at 352-373-1099. And so I am currently looking for a part-time bookkeeper, someone that is knowledgeable of bookkeeping and is familiar with QuickBooks online or desktop. The job can sometime be remote. So that may be a good thing with this new COVID thing that we have going on. Um, and then also I'm looking for an enthusiastic people person, somebody that wants to have fun and prepare taxes. Because really, in reality, preparing taxes is kind of boring, but it's up to you to make it fun. Um, and 
that's what we're looking for. Somebody that wants to add something to their toolbox, something that could be used. You can help your family um, doing your taxes here. <laughs> um, and um, it's just a nice thing to have in your toolbox. It's a seasonal job and could become um, permanent uh, part time. It really depends on how quickly we grow the business. And uh, quite frankly, I'm in the business to grow the business, right? So as an entrepreneur, it's you know difficult to find the right person, but I know you're out there. So I am looking for you. That's right, you right there. So that's all I have. Um, does anybody have any questions? And I do train, by the way, on the tax prep thing. I do have a question for you, Rose. With taxes being, you know, they start hitting us every January, we know they're coming. How long can someone that comes to work for you expect to work? Is this a seasonal position or, you know, something they come back every year? What, what can they expect? Yes, I would love for you to come back every year. That's the goal um, because I do spend a lot of time training someone. Um, and the goal is for the person to continue returning. Um, you know, this is a good start position for someone that's in an accounting um, career or someone that is wanting to be a uh, tax professional or a CPA, this is a great start because you do learn a lot. Um, it is seasonal to begin with, but if you're really good at what you do and you know, it could turn into a full, full year because honestly this year I haven't stopped working and normally it ends in April and I take a vacation. Like I love to travel. <laughs> Well, guess what? This year I did not get to do that. So we don't know what next year is going to be like. Um, so yeah, this would be seasonal to start and could potentially be uh, part-time yearly, if I, if I said that right. <laughs> so I know you kind of mentioned earlier that having some knowledge would be helpful, but um, how much knowledge does someone actually need prior to applying to um, both of those positions? For the bookkeeping, I would need somebody that's knowledgeable because I personally am not a bookkeeper, so I struggle with that piece of the job. Uh, so I would need somebody that knows bookkeeping. Um, as far as the tax, tax prep, you don't need any experience. You just need personality, you know, because you're sitting in front of somebody for that period of time and they're giving you their most, you know, personal information. They could be embarrassed by the stuff that they've done or haven't done. They could, oh, do, they don't know how to explain it to you. So you have to have empathy. Um, you have to be able to talk to somebody. And, you, you know, it's, it's fun because you want to be able to let that person know that you have confidence and that you know what you're doing and that you're there to help them and that there's no judgment. You know, we're just here to help. So it doesn't matter if you've never filed. Um, we do all the training. Um, so I can train you to do taxes. I cannot train a personality, right? You have to have, you know, and we have fun here. If you notice, I have a popcorn machine. <laughs> we pop popcorn here um, during tax season, not off season, because, you know, I'd be eating popcorn all the time. And we have a community board. So we try to highlight our local businesses. Um, so it could be a lot of fun. I understand you're quite well versed in yoga as well, so you can help your employees de-stress when things yes. get a little bit rough, right? Oh, yes. I do. The office does smell like a spa. <laughs> and also the music has a tendency to be spa-like music. So when people come in here, they're agitated and within seconds, they're like super relaxed. And they always make a comment like, wow, it's like, it smells so nice in here. So it's like, you know, it's a little added bonus. And then if we do get stressed out, I'll do a little breath work and, you know, we'll do a little yoga and the clients love it, <laughs> especially if they have little kids. <laughs> That's awesome. Rose, thank you so much for joining us again. We love having return guests on our program. Awesome. Anytime. And I did post the jobs on the Career Source Center, just in case anybody wants to see that. Fantastic. We'll put a plug in for that in just a little bit. Thank you. Next up, we have Kate from City Year here to tell us about careers in both education and in the nonprofit sector. Welcome, Kate, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. I am going to try, can you all see my screen? Looks great, Kate. Awesome. So, yeah. Oops, sorry. Um, 
Here we go. Okay, so I work with City Earth. So we are a nonprofit. We're a national organization focused on building equity in education. Um, and we have a few different career opportunities that we're currently hiring for. Um, so first, so you can see it, this is my contact info. So at the bottom is my um, email address and cell. If anybody sees something that they're interested in um, that they might wanna follow up and get um, more information on as well. Um, but really to get started, I'm actually gonna show a quick video here. This is the sound of hope. The sound of the hardest thing you will ever do. But the best thing you will ever do. Because this sound is the sound of change. So that is um, really just kind of a quick snapshot of what our organization does. So we are a national nonprofit. Um, we do have remote opportunities for folks that are really wanting to stay in Gainesville as well. Um, but in terms of where we work in Florida specifically, the closest locations are um, in Jacksonville and Orlando. Really our goal as an organization, we actually partner with local school districts around the country. Um, in the local city school district, really with the goal of bringing extra people power into the schools. And we hire young professionals to be a full-time coach and mentor for a year, really being able to kind of be that adult in our students' lives that's not like a teacher or a guidance counselor, but more of that like mentor type role where they can be a lot more kind of like flexible and adaptable towards the students' learning needs, but also just what they, they need kind of to help with that like social emotional support side. Um, so we do hire, if you are kind of just starting out your career, um, we do hire for entry level positions. If you're interested in either like nonprofits or education, or really just want to kind of give back and work with students as you're kind of figuring out next steps. So if you're interested in either like taking a gap year or just getting that entry level experience, we basically have um, one year full-time AmeriCorps programs where you serve um, one year as a, a full-time coach and mentor in a school working directly with um, K through 12 students. Additionally though, um, if you're a little bit more experienced and kind of looking for something more long-term and permanent, um, we also have a lot of staff opportunities when it comes to nonprofit management, um, marketing in kind of that, that education field. And then we also have a lot of opportunities in HR. So like right now, specifically, I know in Florida, we are currently looking for a recruiter. And then we also have an opening for an admissions manager as well. If you're, um, if you're looking for a like full-time opportunity while in school, or if you're recently graduated too. So um, for staff opportunities, you can also just email me directly. Um, but the best way to kind of find new opportunities that are coming up in Florida, we do have a lot of remote positions. You can look at City Year's career pages as well. Um, if you are interested in something that's a little bit more temporary with, we have year long and semester programs for student success coach positions working in the school. You can also contact me directly or you can find the position description as well, um, located on Santa Fe College's um, job board too. So yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And definitely if anyone is interested or has more um, questions, definitely feel free to reach out to me anytime. Hey, I have a question for you, my own question. Do you happen to know the origin of the name City Year? Where did that come from? Yes, we, um, it's actually our organization. We work in um, cities for a year. So basically the, the purpose of the program is to, um, we hire young people to basically do a year of service um, in one of our 29 locations. Awesome. Yeah. So for your people who participate within City Year, um, I know there could be some benefits that come out of the program. Could you talk a little bit about those benefits? Yes. So for City Year's program, it's a little bit untraditional than a, a typical like full-time opportunity. So you do get paid while you're in the year. You get a stipend. 
I will be honest in saying that like the, the stipend is definitely a tough financial commitment when you're in it. But then at the end of the year, you get a $6,000 scholarship that you can either use if you have past student loans from school that you've already attended, you can use it towards that. Otherwise, it's good for up to seven years. So you can use it if you're continuing to your bachelor's or master's degree um, as well. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Kate. Um, as you're talking about mentorship, mentorship is really, really important, in my opinion, um, especially for our youth. So thank you for mentioning that. And thank you for being with us today and sharing this information. Um, I definitely know that City Year is making a positive impact in the communities they are serving. So thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. And um, yeah, I really appreciate it. If anybody has more questions, definitely feel free to reach out. So next up, we have um, North Florida Medical Center, a huge health care provider right here in Alachua County. They really wanted to be here today, but weren't able to make it. So they have prepared an awesome video that James will be sharing with you. All right, that is it from North Florida. What a great video. So last but not least, we have Infinite Energy here with us today. Welcome, Caitlin, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, and thank you for having me. Um, I'm just going to share my screen quick. All right, just making sure, can you see um, my presentation? Awesome. All right, so hi, I am Caitlin. I'm the Talent Acquisition Specialist for Infinite Energy. Um, Infinite Energy has been recognized as one of Florida's best companies to work for, um, both by Outside Magazine and also within the community. We've had a lot of, recommend, uh, we've had a lot of recognition as well. Um, so a little bit about Infinite. It was started about 26 years ago. Um, by our co-CEOs, Darren and Rich, who actually were co-workers at GRU. So we have uh, some deep roots in the community uh, and they decided to go into business together. Um, so Infinite Energy is a, um, is a marketer for natural gas and electricity, which what the heck does that mean? I know. Um, so in areas that are deregulated, meaning people can choose who their utility provider is, it's not assigned based on location. We operate in those areas um, so we buy, I'm going to focus on natural gas um, just for the purposes of the role we'll be talking about later. Um, so we purchase uh, wholesale natural gas from the stock market. Uh, we purchase access to other people's pipelines and we provide natural gas to the end user that way um, with a huge focus on customer service and cu customer experience and satisfaction as well. Um, so a little bit about our culture and what it's like to be a part of the Infinite team. 
Um, so Darren and Rich wanted to create a work environment and atmosphere and culture where people could show up to work and really enjoy uh, being at work, um, going to work the next day, and really enjoy the team that they work on. Um, so we have a lot of focus on camaraderie. It's a family atmosphere. Um, and Infinite Energy is also really invested in our team members. And that shows through some of um, the different benefits and perks that we offer. Um, we have a huge focus on health and wellness. Um, we offer different health classes, yoga, which we've been able to do virtually. Um, we also have an on-site gym. Uh, there's also a focus on financial well-being. Um, one that shows in how we compensate our folks. Um, and we also do financial, we offer financial um, courses as well. Um, and finally, professional development. Um, there's lots of opportunities for growth and development and um, improving yourself. Um, there's an emphasis on values and culture. Um, we have company values and we look for folks that align in those values. Um, and also we trust people first, um, which makes it easy when you have people that are ethical and, and align with your values. Um, we allow people to be independent in their roles. We trust that they're going to make the right decisions. We trust that they're gonna do a good job. So some of the benefits that we offer for part-time employees, um, the biggest one is gonna be our 401k program. Um, so Infinite Energy will match 100% of the employees first 3% contributions. And then we match 50% for the next four and five um, percent contributions. Our minimum pay rate is $15 an hour. So you will never make less than that at Infinite Energy if you're an employee. Um, right now we are um, temporarily remote. So you get to work from home. Um, we have an on-site gym, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and finally, my favorite, um, the biggest benefit to me is Infinite Energy is really easy to fall in love with. Um, so, and I, I think that's really rare. Um, so that's a huge benefit. So open positions, right now we only have one position. Um, we're looking for a bilingual part-time customer experience specialist. So a little bit about this position, um, our customer experience specialists are responsible for handling incoming customer calls from our existing customer base. Um, and they're answering customer questions, helping them resolve any issues. Um, so that could be anything related to um, questions about their bill, um, if they have any complaints, billing inquiries, payment options, really any reason that you might call your utility provider is why our customers are calling us. Um, so the customer experience specialist is responsible for handling those calls with empathy and understanding um, and trying to help our customers. Um, and also there is a small sales component um, for upselling our customers. We offer products that will help them actually save money or um, in, you know, contribute to the environment. Um, for example, they can um, contribute $5 a month to offset their carbon footprint. Um, and this position, it's gonna be about 20 hours a week. Um, we're looking for someone that is fluent in English and Spanish because we do have a huge Spanish speaking customer base. Um, minimum requirements, uh, there's really not many. For anyone that's excited for this role, if you are excited about helping people, we wanna to talk to you. Um, there is a typing requirement of 35 words per minute. Um, and again, that empathy component, that's so important to us. Um, and some work experience, though it's not required, but if you do have experience in anywhere from retail, the service industry, any sort of te telephone experience, sales, customer service, um, you're the person that we're looking for. All right, so just kind of um, quickly summarize some of the points I went over and, and a little bit more details. Um, so again, location, it is remote right now, but we are looking for people in the Gainesville, Florida area. Um, deadline to apply is next Friday, the 30th, um, end of business day, so about 5 p.m. Um, please get your applications in. To apply, you can go to infiniteenergy.com slash careers. Um, it's part-time, and the compensation is $15 an hour um, plus a 401k. All right, so thank you so much for your time today. Um, I'm so excited to be able to talk to you about Infinite Energy and the opportunities that we offer. Um, again, you can apply online through our career site, or if you do have questions, you, I included my email, kmmcgowan at infiniteenergy.com. Feel free to shoot me an email. Hey, I have a question for you. 
Uh, in a conversation we were having a little bit before we started today's show, you mentioned that you've recently resumed hiring. Mm -hmm. uh, we're always interested in what businesses have done, you know, what kind of changes have taken place because of COVID. What kind of changes have taken place at Infinite Energy with, with the COVID-19 environment? Yeah, so the biggest one is going to be remote work and flexibility. Um, so we were completely working in the office. Everyone was required to show up in person. Um, the beginning to mid-March, we made a company call um, out of concern for our employees' health to operate fully remotely um, within a week deadline. Um, so we were able to quickly accommodate that. And, you know, since then it's been, um, you know, kind of having to be flexible with uh, students or, you know, with uh, kids, you know, being on, on class at home and walking into parents' meetings, and that's totally fine. We can be flexible with that as well. I have another question for you. Um, so for a part-time position that you're talking about, you mentioned 20 hours, um, but what would a week look like? Depending on days and times, do we just get to create that ourselves, or is there a certain time that we have to clock in? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so during training, which is going to be the first month, it's on-the-job paid training, um, so that's going to be Monday through Friday, 12 to 5. Um, unfortunately, we can't be too flexible with that. Um, but afterwards, there is some flexibility. Um, but it's still going to be Monday through Friday, about four hours per day. Um, but in a way that makes it a little bit more predictable to work around. Um, so if you, know, if you have certain hours, don't let that stop you from applying. We can always try to, to find a solution. Caitlin, last question. I have to point out. You're just smiling from ear to ear as you give this presentation. So I have to ask, what do you like the most about working for Infinite Energy? Yeah, so it's kind of cliche, I guess, but I definitely, my favorite part is working with the people. Um, Infinite Energy has been around for 26 years. So we have people that are as tenured as that. We have people that have been here for 10 years, five years, or if you're me, a year or less. Um, but it doesn't matter. You're instantly accepted as one of the own, as one of their own. And it feels like, you know, I've been working there as long as they have. Um, and just a really supportive team that I've been able to learn a lot from. Um, and that's, that's my favorite part. I love it. Caitlin, thank you so much for being here with us today. We'll keep an eye open for that perfect candidate and send him or her your way just as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Have a great day. As a reminder, all of our guests' contact information is listed below in the description box. Also, check out our Santa Fe Student Job Board Career Coach to find these and many other great jobs locally and abroad. And more importantly, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions or need assistance of any kind. Well, that's our show for today, guys. Our next show is scheduled for November 5th at 10 a.m., so mark your calendar and be sure to join us. Yes, and thank you to all of our guests for being here. Thank you for sharing all of this wonderful information. I definitely will share this video afterwards with my friends. And from all of us at Career Coffee Shop, while we continue to weather the storm, our guests and from all of us here at Santa Fe College, we want you to know that we are here for you and committed to your success. So thank you, stay safe, and enjoy the rest of your day. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.